What's up, everybody? Tonky here, and I want to talk about something that affects a lot of us, especially on YouTube, and that is content creation. Yes, we're going to talk about Microsoft and content creation. Ooh, very interesting, right? When we think of content creation, we think of live streaming, especially for video games. The first name that comes to mind, or at least the first name that should come to mind, is Twitch. But Microsoft is actually going to be entering that ring in just a little bit. I don't know if a lot of people actually heard this news because it kind of got swept under the rug. So stick around, and I'm going to tell you all about the Creators Update coming to Windows 10. Microsoft has really changed its tune as of late. For a little while there, they seemed like they were kind of going a more Apple-esque approach and trying to develop their own mobile operating system. Uh, it's kind of been a little bit weird. Their forcing of the kind of touchscreen type controls for Windows 8, a little bit confusing, but it seems like they've kind of turned around. Now for gaming, Microsoft has made a lot of really, really great changes. Xbox Live Gold is actually kind of worth it and they've also made a very big change that I've been a very big fan of and that is being able to play Xbox One exclusive titles on your Windows 10 PC now locking it to Windows 10 was a little bit strange and you have to buy those games digitally so there is a little bit of a caveat when it comes to being able to play your Xbox One games on Windows 10 but they do have an Xbox app and you can stream it across your network so it's not all bad but it seems that the company that announced that your Xbox One was going to have to be always on and you were never going to be able to trade in your games back in 2013 when they first announced the Xbox One is dead and gone. And I am very, very thankful, and you should be too, because man... Uh, that was a disaster. Microsoft has added a few very important things to their lineup. Edge is actually a good browser now. I know. I know. Pitchforks. Pitchforks. IE sucks, Edge sucks. No, Edge is actually a good browser. It just needs some extension support, some extension love. But it's actually a great browser now. It is a good co a competitor to the Chrome Firefox duopoly that we see. Of course, some people are also using Safari. And then there are still some of you out there that are holding out with Opera. Stay strong, brothers. The Surface Series has been a really nice addition as well. And... Something that's actually come out fairly recently is the ability to use the Bash shell on Windows 10. Uh, for those of you that know what that means, you're probably very excited. For those of you that don't, it doesn't matter. Just know that Microsoft has done a good job. Microsoft has also done a much better job developing software for their competing operating systems such as OS X, iOS, and Android, proving that Microsoft can still be king of the office even while developing decent software for all their competition. Now, obviously, Microsoft still has a long way to go. There's still a lot of very, very bad things that Microsoft does, but they've been making a lot of great improvements, and I wanted to point out where I think Microsoft has really been getting it right as of late. Well, the Creators Update should release early 2017. Some sites are even reporting April, more specifically, so really soon. The update will be free for Windows 10 users, and according to Microsoft, the Creator's Update will bring 3D and mixed reality to everyone, empower every gamer to be a broadcaster, connect people faster to those they care about most, and much more. Wait a minute. Those are some vague marketing terms right there. What does it mean to empower every gamer to be a broadcaster? Let's do a little research. So according to this quote, Beam system integration will enable interactive broadcasting and viewing of gameplay on Xbox Live, so you can watch your favorite streamer play and interact with them in real time. The creator's update will also bring user-generated tournaments via Arena on Xbox Live, so you can define the rules of competition, invite friends, and track tournament progress seamlessly across devices. Plus, with a Windows 10 gaming PC, you're able to play games like Forza 3, Gears of War 4, and more in 4K, in the highest possible visual fidelity. Visit Xbox Wire to learn more about what today's news means for gamers. What the hell is Beam? And what the hell is Arena? Uh, how is that empowering? Let's continue. Well, I did a little digging, and it looks like Arena is actually kind of already out. 
Now, Twitch has been top dog for a long time, and a lot of other companies have thrown their own hats into the ring to try and compete with Twitch. Uh, Those along the lines of Hitbox, MLG, Owned, or Own 3D, which uh, catastrophically failed, might I remind you, and even the lord of online content sourcing YouTube, which you are watching this video on right now, even YouTube tried to compete with Twitch and has not had the same pickup that Twitch has. But the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 can already stream to Twitch, so what does Beam have going for it? Well, Beam.pro has a gimmick. Along with being cooked into Windows 10, Beam also has a whole list of features that we'll read out here. So as you can see on this page, on this roadmap, which I just want to call out real quick how amazing a roadmap is for a website. I absolutely love seeing roadmaps on websites, especially for something like this where they're trying to compete with a top dog like Twitch. Being able to see what they're working on next and what they've been working on and completed already up until this point is really, really great. But as you can see here, they've got some stuff that is totally not sexy in here, but is still kind of cool, such as desktop notifications for chat tags or Twitter and Discord login. Not very sexy, but cool to have. The chat interactive and Beam API being available is very nice. But here's some things that are actually a little bit interesting. Virtual currency and leveling. What does that mean? We're going to have to go into that a little bit. Built-in giveaway systems. That's nice. That is very nice to have. HTML5 playback. It took Twitch like five years to finally do that. And of course, they have Discord integration, a Kindle app, downloadable VODs on mobile, Chromecast streaming. You can read through this list on your own. I don't have to read it all out. But you can even see up here in these little purple ones, these are all features that are in their roadmap. So these are all features that they want to be able to build in. Now we can see that there are some interesting things in here that I would love to hear more about. One of them in particular being co-streaming. What does co-streaming mean? I would love to understand what that means. Does that mean basically giving somebody on your channel the or giving some another content creator the ability to stream to your channel? Are you going to be able to make a game channel? That would be kind of cool to hear more about. Built-in donation system would be very, very nice to have. They don't have private messaging, group messaging, channel moderation logs, theater mode, console apps, but those things are all in development, so we know they at least have a focus on them. But Beam's biggest gimmick is the ability to interact with the streamer that you are actually watching. As you can see down here, there are a bunch of icons that you can click on as you earn points in the channel. There's a lot of interactivity, there's groups, all different kinds of stuff that you can actually join up. So clubs, teams, a lot of cool stuff that Beam has that uh, Twitch does not. And here's another positive for Beam. The Xbox One can already stream to it. And OBS actually already has Beam as an option in there as well. So you can actually go and start streaming on Beam right now, which might be a good idea for somebody who's trying to start a brand new channel. Twitch has got a lot of competition, and if you can get onto Beam, expecting it to get really big with this creator's update that may be coming out in April, maybe coming out in quarter one 2017 we don't know exactly when it is yet and it'll probably get announced very soon when we can see the creators update but it's going to be a very small pond and the pond is going to grow so if you are a medium-sized fish in that pond and that pond grows you could become a big fish and they've already got partnerships on there so if you're trying to grow a channel you can always give beam a shot so Beam actually looks kind of cool, and the creator's update is looking very interesting. I'll have some links down in the description if you want to go check out a little bit more of what Microsoft provided about the creator's update, and I'll put a link down there to Beam.pro, the website. You can just go to Beam.pro. Very easy to get to. I actually kind of like the website. It's very interesting, and competition is always good. But the most important thing with these web ti- websites is content creation are there going to be enough content creators that either jump ship to beam or is beam going to grow enough where people can rise to the top there anyways and be able to make streaming a bigger and a wider uh, field of competition because right now it is basically twitch or nothing so what do you guys think should i make a beam channel should i do some streaming on beam i know i'm not streaming on twitch anyways but uh we could try and figure out a couple of beam streams Those always sound kind of goofy to say. 
But anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Are you going to jump on Beam? Should I jump on Beam? Is anybody going to jump on Beam? Is it going to fail? Is it the next own 3D? Let me know in the comments. I love you all. Until next time, Tonk out.